views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Patasek. Marge was searching for the purpose of her life and the truth that would tie everything together to make sense of what was taught and what was happening on our planet, the fire that was creating all the smoke. Through many experiences, she was finally led to the knowledge book that provided all the answers. Marge is now talking about this gift to humanity on Knowledge Book Radio, so all can be united in peace, love, and harmony. This live call-in show at 1-800-930-2819 is amazing. So get ready to hear about the Knowledge Book. Here's your host, Marge Patasek. Hello, everyone. I'm March Batazic, and you're listening to the Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic on Transformation Talk Radio. And for the next hour, just like we've done for the previous hours, we will continue to cover some topics from the Knowledge Book. However, in between the time that we've talked last and I gave um, a topic discussion, we received a lot of questions, so we decided that this time around we'll address those questions. So from here on in, we'll be doing listener questions, and hopefully that will answer some of the questions. And of course, if it doesn't, or if this answer of the answers um, produces more questions, which they are likely to do, then please do text those messages or email those messages. And my contact information for the email is mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's Mary Mary John Peter 99 at gmail.com. Or my text number, my cell phone number is 973 787 7035. Again, 973 787 7035. And I do receive um, questions via the phone, by text, by email. Please contact us with any issues, any questions, or any points that trouble you, and we, we will try to address them. Okay, so the first question that we had received was this one. What about those who are not in the knowledge book? What happens to them? How is this going to work? So, it's wonderful. It's great to know that actually you asked this question and that question came up because that shows that you've gone completely behind, beyond just caring for yourself. You are now thinking of others. You are seeing others. You are be having concern for others, which means that you have broken the ego chain and that you're going towards a more positive direction. In short, you have become aware that others around you are in need. And if you are aware, maybe some kind of an idea has popped into your head how that awareness of some situation you can fix, you can ameliorate, you can somehow do something about. And some of you actually may have actually gone on and taken those steps, actually have gone into the active phase and actually done something about the situation you were aware of and had an idea about. Which means your consciousness level has risen about what we call the world dimension. And when reading the knowledge book, um, in one of the fascicles, one of the chapters, it states that the awareness, idea, and action triplet, this trio, is actually the measure of consciousness. How quickly you go from an awareness of a situation, having an idea about that situation, and actually taking some action to address that situation, how quickly you go from awareness to action 
is your measurement level of consciousness. So if sometimes, like me, um, you have an idea that something needs to be clean, cleaned, and you have an idea as to how this should be clean, but you know, you wait three weeks, four weeks, five weeks to actually do the cleaning, consciousness level measurement will be on a low side. However, if you see or are aware of something, see something, have an idea and actually do it immediately, that means you have a high consciousness level, okay? And those who are currently in the knowledge book programs, those are the individuals who actually have become aware of what the knowledge book is, what it does and how it does it. And they actually had the idea they could best help others and themselves and have actually gone in and taken steps to prepare for service for humanity by working in one of the available individual or group programs. And if you look around, what we're seeing is actually a large section of the economy is a service sector. Those are the people who are working to help in some way, shape, or form other people. And this is being done on the world dimension. Maybe this is a training period, meaning, you know, this is how you work and this is what we do to help others, to serve others, whatever that field of service is. Um, <laughs> And this is a training program to us for us to be able to then to serve on a spiritual level, a, a higher level than the world level, level. So what do we have? We also have companies, non-governmental organizations that are being formed because those are the individuals, those are the individuals who saw that there was a need that was not being filled or fulfilled by the governments for whatever reason. They had an idea of how this particular need of humanity could be addressed, and they provided and built and created companies that then had the sole purpose of providing that service that the government isn't providing. So they created companies, they created groups, and they wrote blogs. They did all kinds of things to get that going. They got their funding. And now those organizations are in place and helping to provide services that the governments couldn't or wouldn't provide. But when you look at something else, this is something that is done on a worldly level. And usually on a worldly level, there is a reflection of one-to-one. -one. <clears throat> However, on higher levels, and as far as the knowledge book is concerned, the very fact that you are reading one fascicle of the knowledge book has more power than a thousand people who are meditating, who are doing other spiritual practices. This is how powerful the knowledge book is, and at the same time, how easy it is to do, because all you do is sit and read. Um, you don't have to organize a group, anything like that, okay? So eventually, for all those people who still don't know about the knowledge book, and this is what the question addresses, everyone will eventually have the opportunity to be introduced to the knowledge book before the golden age starts. And those individuals who do understand what the knowledge book is and understand, at least know, some of the aspects of the programs that are available, then they are helping at least a thousand of their coordinates through the reading program. And we've covered the reading program as to the guidelines and how it is to be done in a previous um, hour. But in essence, the reading program that's done from the latest version of the knowledge book that has the owners, the date that they received the book or the date that they signed, that date, the name written in typeface and then in a signature that book when they read the reading the knowledge book uh, according to the reading program they are giving consciousness agraftments to at least a hundred or a uh, summary i'm uh, sorry the at least a thousand or more of that individual's coordinates so they become ready for the knowledge book do the reading program for 10 years, and you've helped 10,000 different individuals, each of whom are at your coordinate at the time. Because we need to remember that every time you finish the knowledge book reading 
all the way through for the entire year, you are now at a completely different energy, frequency, consciousness, and evolution level, which means you now have a thousand different coordinates than you've had before. And the work towards those coordinates are being done by the system. And this is done by you reading. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to call anyone. It is the system that does the work and does the engraftment for you. But they are measuring those people and figuring out who they are. And are, you are able then to help them by reading. There are other programs. We've also covered that previously in previous shows. This was the Council Program, the Totality of 18 Program, the Reflection Focal Points, and the Flower Programs. All of these programs reflect beta energies. In the case of the Totality of 18, it reflects them horizontally and opens up um, different programs, different energies for that country that they are connecting to the dimension of All Merciful. And the other programs do the horizontal reflection. And in all of them, both vertical and horizontal, beta energies are being given. Um, positive energies are being increased. Negative energies are being neutralized. And everyone's evolution gets speeded up. When there is a focal point in a city, and that focal point has 21 participants on that night, and this is every Saturday, when that focal point has 21 visitors, that creates a magnetic field that, it, that affects the entire city where that focal point is being helped. So 21 people have the potential, let's say in New York City, of helping and having 8 million people being helped. So this is how powerful the knowledge book is when you look at what it does, how it does it, and the actual numbers. Okay, and what do these 21 people do? Are they canvassing from door to door and talking to people about the knowledge book? No. These are individuals who come Saturday at, to the focal point. They sit in chairs and we read one chapter of the knowledge book. Then the solar teacher explains the chapter of the knowledge book. And the people basically focus on that fascicle that is being read or following along in the reading and then listen to the explanation. And that's it. That's all they have to do. It is the system that does the work for them of helping the other people in that city. So this is not a difficult study to accomplish. <clears throat> and on Fridays when we have flower studies, there are 7,000 coordinates at least that are being helped in those studies. So the reflection is done to at least the 7,000 coordinates. Okay. And again, they increase positive energies, decrease negative energies, and accelerate the evolution of those in the area. So everyone much more quickly, which is what the question is about, gets in contact with the knowledge book and is able to progress. And the other thing is this, sometimes you may meet an individual who wants to give you a chapter or three chapters from the knowledge book. Those are probably something that we call missionaries because they are in the program of the knowledge book. They're in a council, totality of 18, um, or they become solar teachers by being flowers. Um, and they have a conscious mission day where they, um, where they are to give a, a mission day fascicle to someone on that day. And when you, when the missionary gives that fascicle to someone else, then if that someone who is receiving the fascicle has a very heavy karma, then that karma is alleviated. Um, also, when someone else mentions the knowledge book to someone, just mentioning it, and this doesn't have to be a missionary, if someone mentions the, mentions the knowledge book to someone, then the system sees that individual, and they then, by, based on that individual's reaction to the words knowledge book or what is being said about the knowledge book, then that individual, again, is being helped and guided and eventually they will get in contact with the knowledge book when they fulfill whatever karmas they still need to pay and when they fulfill their energy requirements because the knowledge book you need to be at the left frequency which is the 72nd energy dimension. Okay, 
Um, now, there is also a different program that's been established this year. This was inaugurated in 2017 um, on June 22nd and 23rd. It started uh, this year, and this is an organization called the Call to Friendship. And the Omega Dimension, up till now, has been open to the planet only on June 21st. And because this association was formed, um, right now the, the Omega Dimension will be open to the world planet um, at least 12 times a month. So at least 144 times a year. And what that happens is this. When this organization talks about some topic um, that they know about, the Omega Dimension, actually the World Dimension, is opened and the Omega energies come streaming into the world planet. And in this way, the entire planet gets evaluated. Meaning, the goal here is to correlate the people with an evolution level, with a specific evolution level, to a plan, an evolutionary plan, a different dev evolutionary path that will be most suited for them to progress the fastest. Because sometimes even though we do come in with our own plan of destiny, with our own plan as to what we need to accomplish as far as evolution is concerned, we somehow get so engrossed with the world, with going to job, going to work, going, getting paid, going, um, taking care of everything that we need to take care of. And we basically forget about a promise that we had made in order um, when we first came into the, and the reason for the reason that we came into this planet. Okay. So again, this call to friendship association is an Omega program and it is a program that allows the world dimension magnetic field to be opened, omega energies to be streamed in, and the, all the entire planet, all the people in the planet to be scanned and then to be helped in finding the teachers, finding the books, going through situations and events that allows them to much more quickly get in contact with the knowledge book and with the salvation plan. Okay? Now, I've been talking about evolution. I've been talking about energy and frequency dimensions. Now, it is evolution. It is our evolution that actually educates the human and renders them conscious. And this is accomplished initially through the sacred books and the alpha energies that those sacred books have imbued to us. However, we not need to, once we finish with the alpha training program, now we need to be on the universal education level. And this is where the better energies that are given and therefore the human then mat is matured. Okay, So alpha energies get you the point of maybe being a teenager as it were. And then when the better energies come in through the knowledge book and the universal education program or that evolution program, then we start to mature. We start to become what we really need to be and potentially are. And it is those better energies that help us to prepare us for the exit. The human needs both being saturated with alpha and beta energies in order to enter the salvation program. And the knowledge book, as many of you know, is the container, is the magnet that draws in both the alpha and the beta energies that are present on that day and gives them to the individuals in the dosage, in the amount, at the level that is perfect and suited for that individual at the particular point in time. And as more energies are being given, one time passes, then those energies again are available for that individual. And that individual is, in the meantime hopefully has evolved much more quickly by doing what they need to do and then they accumulate more and more energies and then they become each cell each consciousness becomes a hundred percent full of alpha and beta energies but although the celestial authorities do have tremendous power and are always poised to help us they have a pledge to never interfere with our free wills so no matter how much they are ready and willing to help, their hands are tied 
unless we do something to deserve that help. And they can do nothing directly for an individual unless we ourselves introduce that other individual to the knowledge book. Okay, so now I have a question for the individual who asked this question. You have this awareness of others, but what comes next? Do you have an idea now of how you can help that individual? What you can do for those others that don't know about the knowledge book? And once you've become aware of the knowledge book programs, will you be then willing and take the plunge to actually help the next individual? Um, now that you're also aware of the knowledge book and what maybe have some idea of what the knowledge book does and how it does it, are you willing to take the next steps? How is your awareness, idea, and action triplet? What is your consciousness level? And what are you willing to do? Are you at least willing to do an individual program, like the reading program, like the writing program? Or maybe you can join a group program, a council, uh, maybe go to a focal point if that's available in your area, or do something. And this is eventually everyone will know about the knowledge book. There are various ways to help other individuals. And it is because we are helping others that we ourselves are helped. The critical thing about this is that even though the knowledge book gives us tremendous benefits, at the same time, if we are working to get those benefits, then those benefits are negated because we are here to learn how to serve others. And that's what we've been actually learning all along is to think of others ahead of ourselves. This is what is called altruism. And this is how we're able to help others. And because we are helping others, we are automatically being helped. So when the celestial authorities' hands are tied, what unties their hands and allows them to help us is our willingness to serve others and our actual ability and serving others, okay, and are actually doing and serving others. Okay, so in case you have any further questions on this, of this answer as raised questions, please do call me or text me or email me, again, mmjp99 at gmail.com. Uh, Mary Mary John Peter <clears throat> at gmail.com or 973-787-7035. Then we have uh, another question, and that question dealt with what happens to you when you die? Well, we are the ones that actually decides who dies and when we die. Um, we hear of people, we have stories of people um, who are perfectly healthy, and somehow that day, um, they say, well, today's a good day to die. They lay down and they die. Um, so this is something that we have a control of. And even those individuals who have been critically injured, but if they need to still speak to someone or do something or somehow communicate something before their death, then they stay alive until to the point when they've accomplished that thing. And when they've satisfied that which they needed to satisfy before they death, that's when they die. So what actually happens when our brain signal gives a signal of death? When they do, when our brains do, then the system takes over. And our spiritual energies go into a, a filtration medium. We are measured and we are checked. We are checked in the archives and they check us out and said, okay, have you or have you not completed all the karmas? Have you learned all the lessons that you needed to learn? If you have learned all the lessons and are at the required energy frequency level that are, allows us to enter the advanced dimensions, then we get embodied in the next dimension, in that higher dimension. However, if our karmas, if our accounts are not settled completely and we still have some dregs of karmas that we still need to deal with, that means we still need to go through evolutions or even if our karma is completely settled and we are at the level of the energies and frequencies that allow us to go on to the next dimensions, but your family or your near and dear ones still need you here on this planet, or, in some cases, 
individuals have promised to certain work on this planet as missionaries. So those individuals come right back to this planet for another incarnation, and they get incarnated at the exact level that they finished off in their previous life. And none of this is actually the individual who has died and come back is not aware of this happening at all. It's an automatic process. Okay. So again, when you die, you get measured. Are you at the energy frequency level to go to the next higher dimension? Are your karma accounts settled? The answer is yes. Then you go on to the next dimension. Forget about the world. And then if in the case where you still have evolution to go through, or your near and dear ones help need help from you, or you are a missionary who has promised to come back to do some work, then you get incarnated back on this planet at the same level that you finished in your previous lifetime. Okay. Now there's another question. Magnetic fields are mentioned a lot in the knowledge book. How do they work? Now, the dictionary definition in dictionary.com online, it says that it's a noun and it's a region of space near a magnet, electric current, or moving charged particle in which a magnetic force acts on any other magnet, electrical current, or moving charged particle. In the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it's again a noun. And the definition is the portion of space near a magnetic body or current carrying body in which the magnetic force due to the body or current can be detected. And so on the physical terrestrial level, a magnetic field is formed by an electric current or by an object like a magnet. However, in the knowledge book, the magnetic fields that the knowledge book is talking about are formed differently. And this is where the magnetic field is formed by our thoughts, okay? And this magnetic field is formed during the time that we are doing our knowledge book studies. Like we're doing the reading program, the writing program, the council, the reflection focal point, the tides of 18 or flowers. And it is our brain frequency and thought power that creates this magnetic field. Now, the magnetic fields that are, very, that are formed are very sensitive. And they're usually described as a very quiet summer evening. Nothing is stirring. Nothing is heard. There is no motion that's going on anywhere. So even there is no even um, any kind of a movement of a leaf or a grass, nothing. Okay. However... When a motion is detected, that you know that something went through that field. So in this kind of a very still, quiet magnetic field, any kind of a harsh or sudden noise or movement, then the magnetic field is affected. And the magnetic field is also fluctuated or disturbed by our thoughts, especially our terrestrial or worldly thoughts. And in the case where we are preoccupied with our shopping list or going to the dentist or I've got to get the kids to the doctor, I've got to do this, I've got to do the other, and you're not focusing on what you're reading or you're not focusing um, <clears throat> on what's going on in the knowledge book, especially in the focal point or, or council, then the system steps in and in order to protect the magnetic field, it actually allows the person to go to sleep, in which case that person is in the frequency totality of the study and at the same time they don't disturb the magnetic field. And what happens? When a magnetic field of the study is formed, the knowledge that is being covered at that time in the fascicle that's being read is drawn by the system and reflected to other dimensions technologically and we don't have to do anything, we don't have to think about anything because the system does it for us. All we do is read, explain and focus what we're reading and explaining. Now every study that we carry out gets connected at that time to a frequency dimension that is within its own constitution. And this is how all the cosmoses that can communicate with each other do communicate with each other and this is a technological way of things being carried out in this way. So in order for our studies to be affected in order for us not to waste our time and effort, we need to be careful to protect the magnetic field, both our own and the group magnetic field. So 
how do we protect the magnetic field? Number one, loud noises fluctuate the magnetic field. However, this only holds when those loud noises are consciously made. If you need to cough, if you need to sneeze, accidentally dropping something, that does not count here. This is unconscious accident stuff that we have no control of. Therefore, that does not affect the magnetic field. However, answering around, walking around the room, answering the telephone, not making sure that the phone is shut off, opening the door when the doorbell rings, when the studies are being carried out, they all affect the magnetic field. Now, the other thing that fluctuates the magnetic field is another magnetic field. <clears throat> the knowledge book, that magnetic field, when it comes across a knowledge from another dimension, from another magnetic field, it automatically, automatically locks up the magnetic field and the reflection does not take place. And the objective of our reading and our doing any one of the studies is to have that energy that is coming in through the fascicle that's being read and explained that to be reflected to the surrounding area and to our coordinates. Therefore, if the magnetic field is locked because of our thoughts, it is if the magnetic field is locked because of the noise that we make, then time is wasted, both our own time and the other people's time in the room. And the purpose of reflection of that study does not take place. So what are the areas that actually fluctuate the magnetic field and cause it to be locked up? When we talk about dreams or think about dreams, dreams are another magnetic field that will lock up the magnetic field of the knowledge book during the study carried out. Or knowledge from other books, or knowledge from channel information. Um, bringing in knowledge from another fascicle, again, locks up the aura and reflection cannot be made. We need to stay within the scope of the study that is being implemented and the knowledge to be read. And this is all for protecting the magnetic field and therefore protecting the reflection that can take place, um, therefore helping others. Now, we need to integrate with the energies of the knowledge book in order for us to be able to receive permission for transition in this final age. So, what do you mean by fluctuating the magnetic field? In order for us to integrate with the energies of the knowledge book, and in order to receive permission for the transition in this final age through the knowledge book, we need to be able to receive those energies and frequencies if we somehow damage the magnetic field, our own and the study magnetic field, this integration cannot take place, which means we're lengthening the time that we need to be able to integrate with those energies and frequencies, and therefore we don't progress as quickly as we could, and we're wasting our own time, and need then therefore we need more time to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. And all the programs, all the um, studies in the knowledge book that is being given to us, they need to be carried out very carefully. If they're not hard guidelines, but then we need to be careful of them to make sure that we build our own magnetic field and are able to maintain our magnetic fields and to be able to protect the magnetic fields in our studies so that the reflection takes place. Now, another thing that also affects the magnetic field or nicotine in cigarettes or any kind of narcotics, those when in ingested, they block the cosmic energies. And again, we waste our own time. Even though we make the effort to come here, we don't allow it to work because we've taken and ingested those previously. Okay. So what do we do? We make sure that we turn our phones off during the time of the studies. So we're not distracted in any way and the sound doesn't fracture the magnetic field. And as long as we are seriously conducting the studies, paying attention, focusing, um, making sure not to drink alcohol, any kind of metabolism changing teas, then everything is okay, everything works beautifully, and everyone leaves and becomes happy, okay? Uh, again, if you have any questions about this, um, please do text or call me. What does it mean to fluctuate or lock a magnetic field? Okay, this week already covered. 
uh, but I'll go over it again and briefly. So the objective of the knowledge book studies is to form magnetic fields, and that's got to do with a magnetic field then having the capacity and the ability to reflect to the surrounding area. Um, when the magnetic field is strong and is not fluctuated in any way, then the magnetic field fulfills its mission of reflection. And in this case, everyone benefits from the study. And those who are the participants in those studies then also can go home and reflect to others the energies of that study. But again, to summarize, any loud noise, answering the telephone, uh, thinking about worldly uh, thoughts, terrestrial thoughts, uh, bringing knowledge in from other magnetic fields, dreams, channeled information, automatically locks the aura and reflect, no reflection can take place. And in such a case, of course, everyone is wasting their time because the purpose of reflection and absorption of the energies and frequencies of the chapter being studied at that time does not get fulfilled because the aura is automatically locked when it senses another magnetic field. And again, we're wasting time. So I hope this covers the question that was asked. If not, please do email me with additional um, questions and text me again, 973-787-7035. And my email is mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's Mary, 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 Marge, Peter, 99 at gmail.com. Um, I've heard that only people have karmas. Is that true? Are there different kinds or levels of karma? Um, okay. Well, we covered karma in detail in a previous program, but I'll just reiterate briefly what karmas are, and they are lessons still to be learned. Um, but they are not only limited to individuals. They, there are karmas of families, karmas of cities, of countries, etc. They all have their karmas. And each of those entities as a group need to settle all their accounts in order for those individuals in that group to be able to progress and go to the next dimension. And as far as karmas are concerned, there are different kinds of karmas as well. There are karmas dealing with personality, karmas dealing with missions, karmas dealing with past lives, uh, karmas of mediums of living, of evolution, world life. And each one of these has their own particular aspects so we can identify what's happening to us and then correlate it back to the kind of karma or the lessons that we still need to learn and in which case we can address that lesson and maybe alleviate that karma and not have it occur again. So a karma of personality has got to do with the decisions the person makes. What do you emphasize the most? Who is your number one priority or what is your number one priority? Does the world life take precedence or does universal mission life take precedence? And this actually becomes one of the first tests a person goes through when they first become a universal staff by joining the knowledge book studies. A person who has attained a strong personality and strong will will fulfill their responsibilities and fulfill their mission. So this is karmas of personality. Now there's also karmas of mission. And here, what is looked for and what is assessed is whether a person is actually doing the mission or are they jumping here and there and everywhere doing, to, doing all kinds of activities unrelated to their mission. Now, it's okay to go to the movies. Of course, you live your life because your knowledge book is in your life, not apart from it. However, are they going to those parties? Are they go meeting the people? Are they going out and having fun and just having fun? Or are they at the same time looking around and being friendly and seeing if there's an individual that maybe could benefit from, not benefit, could, would be a recipient, a willing recipient of a knowledge book um, fascicule? Or maybe they would be the ones who would, be, would like to come to a focal point and help with the reflection at the focal point. And are they consciously fulfilling their responsibilities, showing up to meetings on time, showing up to reflection focal point on time, handing out mission day fascicles, writing, reading, whatever it is that they're supposed to do. And now when you're not fulfilling and you're not acting responsibly as far as mission is concerned, this is when 
difficulties in the medium of living start popping up. So if you're in a program and you're finding that things are not going right, start looking and seeing and maybe see which area of responsibility and mission maybe you're lacking in and fix that area. There's also karmas of past lives. And this is where a lot of times you would hear the question, what is going on? Who, what, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. Why is, what's going on? Um, so they go through events that they experience in their past lives in the smaller form, in a micro form. And this is the one that gets driven by your sub-awareness to, stir, to still learn the unlearned lesson. So this is a program that's called the Mutual Forgiveness. And you need to be able to fill all your past life karmas, meaning le learn all the lessons that you still haven't learned. And if you don't, that you're not going to be able to pass to other dimensions. And the symptoms here is the same situation happens over and over and over again. And it gets more and more strong as it happens. So you know that there's the answer that you provided or the lesson that you thought le you learned before was not the answer that was expected. It doesn't match what the lesson that is supposed to be learned. So you'll get another opportunity to address that question again. And there's life karmas. This comes from thoughts, individuals' thoughts. Because every word has its own frequency and power of thought. Positive words give positive registrations and negative words give negative registrations and these thoughts of ours create the magnetic field either positive or negative magnetic fields so this is something where we need to actually watch our thoughts and try the best of our ability to produce positive thoughts okay and this thought magnetic field creation, positive or negative, has to do with the law of acceptance. And in the law of acceptance, everything is positive. So we're in the cases where we do not accept everything as it is because it is, then we are registering a negative for our life for this kind, for this karma. Okay. And um, when a positive suggestion is made, the only acceptable answer should be a yes or a maybe. If the person does not want to accept positive suggestions or ways of doing things because of their own individual ideas, individual thoughts, then this is the one that produces the most distress. And this is the one that affects both our bodies and our spirits. There's also karma of evolution. Um, and this is how we serve the other human because evolution our level of evolution is assessed by how willing we are to serve someone else another way of putting it is that our ego is small and our service and our altruism is high okay and in this karma of evolution we need to serve with our bodies by lessening someone else's load and we also serve spiritually through our words and energy that we give and the reflections that are coming in both through our um, light bodies and through our cells. And there's also karmas of world life. And this is with our world undergoing its own evolution and completing its own evolution in this way. Anyone who has a body, who has gotten the privilege of having a body at this time in this physical world, then they have then we can know that they receive permission to be embodied and if those individuals have a positive essence then those individuals have the obligation to repay the debt of having give, been given a body here in this planet to attract and absorb negative frequencies because our positive essence attracts the negativity however when those negativities are high and it's too much for our essence to handle, that's when we become sick. And that's when we have health problems. And how badly we get sick depends on how great the negative energies or positive essences actually attract. Um, and this is where the knowledge book comes in and acts as a protective barrier against the negativity 
and it actually helps to keep us in good health by neutralizing the negative energies around us so the essence doesn't have to absorb everything. So we are in a very strong world magnetic field. Everyone who gets here seems to be stuck here and can't seem to detach from it. But our salvation, our existence depends on our being able to choose a path and a plan that allows us to become genuine humans and exit from Omega to the unknown dimensions and beyond. So now maybe it's a good time before we go to the next question to go for a break. So I um, would like to say that this is the Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic on Transformation Talk Radio. And we'll go for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue with the next question. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Integrate spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show, Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Are you stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a life of inspiration, love, self-acceptance, and fun? Sounds like you're on the verge, on the verge to your next big thing. Join Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio, helping you use your breakdown for a breakthrough, overcome life's greatest challenges, and live the life you want and deserve. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio or visit seattlehealinghypnosis.com for more information. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to corneliastephanie.com. And we're back on Knowledge Book Radio with March Batazic on Transformation Talk Radio. Um, and we took a short break. And as a reminder, we need to re- remind you that the main website is in Turkey, www.dkb.bevlana.org.tr. And the U.S. website is www.usa.theknowledgebook. Dot net. My telephone number for texting is 973-787-7035. Um, my email address is mmjp99 at gmail.com. 
And any comments, any suggestions for topics, any more questions, please do text or email or call. We'll be more than happy to cover this online and I mean on 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 radio. And so we are now continuing our topic for today, which is listener questions. And the next question that we have is, I have heard that the karma program is about to terminate. What happens to people who are not working with the book? Or that is, we're writing outside the council to gain a second incarnation, right? Um, although the karma can be perceived as an automatic program that drives us to learn the still unlearned lessons. It is not really a program. It is not, it is something that is a law. It is a law of karma. And it is connected to the reincarnation program and to world evolution. So world evolution will not end at least until um, the year 4000, because there will still be people who will be incarnated on the planet However, those people who are incarnated on the planet during the time of the Golden Age, they will be going to different places and different dimensions to finish up their um, lessons, to finish up their evolution, and they will not be partaking in the Golden Age per se. Now, it is the actual incarnation program that ended when the period of religions ended, and that was in 1999. Um, we know that... Um, every program has a beginning and every program has an end. Um, and in this case, the reincarnation program, um, the automatic reincarnation cycling program was going on for billions of centuries. And finally, the ending for that program came in 1999. So right now, anyone who has actually incarnated on this planet are here with a mission whether that mission is positive or negative, whether they are doing this mission consciously or unconsciously. And during this time that we're here, we all need to be completely saturated with both the alpha and the beta energies. And this is what exactly the sacred books have been doing in the alpha energies um, and had formed the alpha magnetic field with the formal practices that they um, recommended and those practices and those books allowed us to absorb the energies for us to be able to exist in this alpha energy right now. Now, the knowledge book has the totality of the alpha frequencies of the sacred books, plus it also has the beta energies and has programs and studies specifically for us for this time to most easily and readily absorb the beta energies as well. In case we still lack some alpha energies and we still have missing pieces, then the knowledge book will top these off. And so we will have exactly what we need when we need it and become more and more saturated with all those energies. Now, the reason why the knowledge book, or one of the many reasons why the knowledge book is here, is to take us from the evolution consciousness to universal consciousness. And if you do know about the knowledge book, then... It's pretty certain that this is your last lifetime and you have a choice. You either join the knowledge book studies and go through the exit program in this lifetime or you just write the knowledge book from the first fascicle and write until you finished writing fascicle supplement seven. And in this way, you'll earn another incarnation, right? And succeed and need to succeed in the knowledge book exit program in the next lifetime, in which case you'll be born in Turkey. However, humanity is separating itself through its decisions and actions into two groups. Those who will progress to the advanced dimensions and be in the staff of Allah and work in conjunction with the celestial authorities and the unknown dimensions and those who will be the administrators of the world state of the morrows. Those who will come to the world at the beginning of the golden age are those who will be going onto the path of light since they've succeeded in exiting from a vega. And those who will be incarnating in the world will be taken to special dimensions to fulfill their evolutions in more difficult conditions. So again, the writing program connected to the reincarnation program is in effect until the 40th century in order to accomplish this. Okay, so uh, I think this is all the time that we have 
uh, for answering questions. There are many more, so perhaps the next program will cover the rest of the programs. Um, I had the next topic that is going to be covered is the law of um, acceptance, and the topic after that would be the um, total will and partial will, as mentioned in the knowledge book. Um, so if you have any questions about those, um, we can prepare the show so we could target those answers for those questions. Okay, so again, this is the, all the time that we have for today. Um, please do join me every Tuesday at 1 o'clock Pacific and 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, again, you can email or text your questions or other topics during the week as they arise. We cover questions that we don't currently have time for at another time. And if we have enough questions or not, then we cover more than one radio show for those questions. And again, please join me every Tuesday. Um, do contact us to schedule a conference in your city and we could address more directly your needs. And as Mrs. Chinock often repeats, and the knowledge book says, humanity's verdict is in humanity's hands. You are the ones who will save the world. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasek. Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity, and it's time of transition to the golden age that provided the truth and energies and frequencies. Now, she shares information from and answers questions about the Knowledge Book with you each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit Marge at usa.thenowledgebook.net.